Yo, how's it going everybody? Chadley here and welcome back to another New World video. In today's video, we're going to be looking at our level 60 and max mastery fire staff build. This is going to be our last update before I get the full build put together, which might take some time because it can involve getting legendaries and just the perfect gear. I think that's going to be the last update that we have to this build. But I just wanted to share this level 60 version with you guys so you know exactly what to be specking into as you gather up all the legendaries that we're going to need for the final build. Now this build, you're going to be able to keep it through PvE and PvP and just absolutely decimate. In PvP, I've been wrecking in every single war, putting out between 1 and 1.5 million damage all the time. I went 39 and 1 in a certain war. It's just crazy the amount of damage you can put out with this in both PvE and PvP. There's also a lot of flexibility with this build. With your secondary, you can change out it for different types of weapons. Kind of depends what you're playing as. I swap them pretty often, but the main thing is obviously going to be our fire staff if there's any variations that you guys can do and want to do i'll make sure to point them out as we go through this build but otherwise before we jump in if you guys do have any questions about the build or anything at all make sure you guys come on over to twitch we stream basically every single day i'm happy to answer any questions you guys have but anyways let's go ahead and jump right into this build now we're just gonna be starting off with our gear now obviously like i said we're just gonna be using a fire staff now just get one with as much intelligence on it as you possibly can and then the gem that i normally like to use is a brass gem that is the onyx because it's going to help us with damage while enemies are at full health and with pillar of fire the amount of damage you can do on your first hits is crazy you're going to one shot most things and even late game enemies that are 60 to 65 you can get them down past half health and with just one attack so it's really awesome to have this certain gem on but otherwise if you guys have a dedicated healer you could put on the rally 4 gem which is the diamond that's another 15 percent damage while your health is full so that's another really good option and that would be obviously continue through the entire enemy it's not just while they're at full health so that is another good option but it's a little bit more conditional on if you have a teammate healing you or not there really isn't that much else to say about our fire staff just get the best one that you can there's nothing really too special going on there at least right now until we get the perfect one then maybe the perks will end up playing a little bit bigger of a role but right now i'm just using the syndicate final tier staff and it's actually really good though because it does have crit chance and light and heavy attacks deal extra damage so that crit chance really does add up you're going to notice you're going to be critting a lot more often which is a big part of our damage with a fire staff but otherwise for the secondary i change this out very very often depending on what kind of content i'm doing if i'm just going around questing and i don't really have a healer or anything like that i really do like the hatchet because i can heal myself i can move around quicker i can avoid death with its capstone and that kind of stuff so i think the hatchet as a utility for just main questing stuff is really really good but otherwise if i do have like a healer or i'm in war or anything like that i do like to have an ice gauntlet on the ice gauntlet is insane the debuffs you can put out with it are crazy and overall it's just such a good option if you do have that health incoming from other players it's just really nice and then in wars with how tightly grouped people are you can just absolutely decimate whole groups i have gotten triple quadruple kills with just one ice storm with this in wars it's pretty nuts what you can do with an ice gauntlet and then one other thing with our hatchet is the gem on it that i normally like to use unfortunately this green one didn't have it that i just had on for earlier uh with a one with a gem slot which is you're going to be striving for i really do like to have a damage conversion on it it's going to completely depend what you're fighting if i'm fighting ancients i really do like lightning gems because my fire staff isn't very good against the ancients so i like to make up for that with our hatchet and put a light gem on there otherwise you can swap that gem to pretty much whatever is good against whatever you're fighting against i thought from there we just go ahead and look straight at our skill trees for those three weapon types so starting off with our fire staff this is what i use for literally everything i personally think this is the best fire staff spec that you can do uh in the fire mage tree i grab everything except for anything meteor shower related and then the last pillar of fire one you honestly don't need mana that much with this build especially with the type of armor we're wearing we get a ton of mana as long as you're making sure to dodge and i pretty much never have mana issues maybe like once in a blue moon i'll be low mana but then i just dodge a couple times and i'm good to go again so there's really no point in this because we can actually take that point and put it over here into singe and this is really nice especially with the hatchet meta going on right now if you guys end up getting a crit 
on a hatchet enemy and it activates their capstone they're actually going to burn to death after it runs out which is really nice and it's a really good way to counteract that invulnerability and they try to run away so i really do like singe and just in general it adds up in damage very quickly because you're going to be critting very very often otherwise fireball is our bread and butter with this build we're going to max that out we're going to get cooldowns out of it mana back all that good stuff this is going to be your main ability you're going to cast this pretty much whenever you can and just making sure you are heavy attacking in between abilities so you get those cooldowns going and then obviously we're going to grab runes of helios just 30 percent extra damage while you're standing in that rune that's huge and if more of you guys are running the fire staff with this capstone you guys can chain these together and get the benefit from each other otherwise with the rest of our points into pyromancer skill tree uh we're just going to move down to burnout so i grab pyromania and let it burn for the fortify and then finally we max out let burnout this is just so good for mobility getting out of sticky situations and even for like map mobility it's really nice too if you guys are crossing a river you activate this on one side of the river you can almost always glide completely across it uh just the really wide rivers obviously you can't get quite close enough but you get definitely a huge speed boost you're gonna blow past everybody you're running with so this is really nice for just escaping across a river once you guys get the heated up the burnout goes 50 percent further otherwise my hatchet skill tree we pretty much just focus berserk here on the left skill tree and grab the other passive nodes along the way down and then grab the defy death this is just really nice for high level areas and getting out of sticky situations if you pull out the hatchet when you think you're about to die you can survive and possibly get out and then otherwise the other abilities i use for it are pretty much utility so i use rending throw for applying rend and then obviously we can get this point and if we throw it from far enough away we can get to the 15 percent rend which is very nice so if we swap back on over to our fire staff and then otherwise you guys can pick between social distancing and infected throw i wanted to do infected throw in case i run into any open world pvp because the disease out of this would be really nice for preventing people from healing if they're going to go into a healing circle they're going to heal 30 percent less and then once i get to the last one for it, aerial transmission this is going to help keep that disease on them for a little bit longer otherwise if you purely want to do pve with the hatchet i would probably do social distancing this is really good for getting away from enemies because you can slow them by quite a bit now finally looking at the ice gauntlet tree when i'm using the ice gauntlet with the setup uh, we're going to be fo focusing on the, the Ice Tempest skill tree. And then the main ability over here that we're going to grab is Ice Storm. This is just so good. Weakening Gust. This is very nice. Once enemies are below 50% health, you're going to deal 10% more damage to them. And that includes your teammates, which is really cool. And then otherwise, you can deal a lot of damage with Punishing Storm. And then combine that with the Capstone of Ultimate Chill. This is actually really good because this goes for any ice damage on that enemy. This is actually a debuff. So if any of your teammates are using any sort of ice damage, even conversion ice gem on their weapons, they will get that 35% bonus to their ice damage. So this is really nice for both you and your teammates. Otherwise, with the rest of the points that I'm going to be grabbing with this, it's just going to be in Entombed and Ice Shower. I really do enjoy these. So to get down there, we're going to grab Quick Frost and then we're going to max out Ice Shower first because we can also imply Rend with that. So no matter which one we're using Ice Gauntlet or Hatchet, we can always be applying Rend. And then otherwise, we're going to finish out with maxing out Entomb. This is just really nice for delaying, healing up, and just getting out of sticky situations. It's just a really good fallback option. And then also with the amount of Angry Earth enemies you fight later on with Poison, I'm pretty sure this is going to end up getting rid of that Poison, I would think. So I'm going to be grabbing that and making sure to test that. Now with all the weapon stuff out of the way, let's go ahead and take a look at the armor. There really isn't anything too special going on. Uh, the main things i'm focusing on is getting intelligence on the gear i'm honestly kind of debating going intelligence and constitution for a little bit more survivability you guys can take that pick uh, amongst yourself and it's also going to depend where your attribute points are that one is just going to be basically a juggling act upon yourself it's going to depend completely on your drops but otherwise, what I'm doing with my armor is going for the max medium that I can, which is actually going to be in a perfect world, getting a heavy chest piece and heavy pants. And then we're going to get a light helmet and light gauntlets. And then finally, we're going to get medium boots. And that will get us to 22.9 on our uh, armor load and keep us just in that medium category with as much armor as we possibly can. This is really nice because we actually get three dodges with medium. And then that way we can go ahead and get 30 mana back across all of our dodges. And also another bonus, especially once we're using the ice gauntlet is our crowd control debuffs. We apply it lasts 10% longer. That's not a ton, but it is just a free 10% as an addition to our medium category. Our jewelry is probably gonna end up being the same thing as our armor, just focusing on intelligence and constitution. Uh, those two, 
it as a balance, maybe a little bit more intelligence, probably like two to one intelligence to constitution would be the way to go. And that way you guys can balance dealing a lot of damage and also surviving with a decent amount of health. Everything is gonna change depending on what kind of drops you guys get. And with the more perfect version later on, we'll be able to narrow down exactly what we wanna run in terms of attributes on our armor. Speaking of attributes, that's gonna completely depend on what kind of gear you guys get, what the exact breakdown is gonna be. In a perfect world, I would probably try to get 50 constitution and then whatever else into intelligence. I think 50 constitution is plenty for surviving. And also you guys can get a little bit more healing out of your consumables. And just that combined is really nice for your own survivability and the rest dealing damage. Uh, it's completely up to you. If you feel like you're a little bit squishy and you want to add a little bit more in into constitution, you're more than welcome to take a little bit out of intelligence. But I would really recommend getting the 300 intelligence node because that's 30% damage on first hit a full target because that combined with our onyx gem and then also our 40 percent on our pillar of fire node that's 100 percent extra damage on that first hit of pillar of fire so that really does add up and makes the one shotting a lot easier on mobs but yeah once again overall for these attributes that's going to completely break down to your preferences and exactly your scenarios with like your team comps and stuff like that but overall i just like to max out intelligence i'm pretty decent at surviving through like dodging and things like that so i don't mind a little bit lower constitution for myself but like i said feel free to adjust these to your liking but otherwise let's go ahead and start going through our gameplay and our combos with these different weapon types so starting off with our fire staff like i said pillar of fire is how we're going to be opening pretty much every single engagement when you can because we can activate this from a range and it can hit multiple times. It's all gonna depend on the enemy hitboxes. We might get it right there. Unfortunately, we did only get one time, but you can actually get up to three times, which is pretty darn crazy. But otherwise, once you activate Pillar of Fire, immediately follow up with your fireball and then go to town with heavy attacks. And then if you can use burnout as well, you're gonna get all your cooldowns and just be able to cycle pillar and fireball just over and over and deal a ton of damage. Otherwise the hatchet, I really don't use this all that often. Like I said, it's mainly for utility with the healing with berserk and then also applying rend from a distance with our Q. And that's pretty much really all I use that for. If I need to pre uh, prevent enemies from healing as much, I'll use the infected throw right here but pretty much I mainly just use the rending throw and berserk. But otherwise for the ice gauntlet, the combos that I really like to do, especially in like PVP scenarios, if somebody's rushing me, like a lot of the times as a mage, you're gonna get rushed by great ax users. And as they're rushing you, you can either start with ice shower or ice storm is completely up to you. If you feel like you're gonna have a hard time getting them trapped in the ice shower, you can do ice storm first to slow them down. But otherwise, pretty much what I'll do is as they're rushing me, I'll put down Ice Shower to freeze them in place. And then I will put the Ice Storm on top of them and either go to town like that while they are frozen in place. And then once that's about to run out, I'll swap back to the Fire Staff because Ice Storm will go away once you swap off of the Ice Gauntlet. So just keep that in mind. Otherwise, you can just freeze them in place with Ice Shower and then swap to your Fire Staff because this will remain and keep them frozen in place and you can get easy pillars and fireballs off on them and probably kill them so just to show that off live we're going to try it on this enemy right here so i'm going to make him chase us so pretend this is a great axe user we go ahead and freeze them in place pop the ice storm on top of them right there and as you can see they're heavily heavily slowed and just kind of stuck in place and then once it runs out we can swap back on over to our fire staff and just go to town and they can't even hit us and they're dead that's pretty much going to be the scenario in pvp as well i've done it plenty plenty of times in war with any sort of like spear or great x users rushing me in the back line yeah that is our level 60 max mastery fire staff build this build is about to get even crazier as i get my hands on more and more legendaries and the perfect gear that we need to just absolutely send this build through the roof so make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel if you're on the lookout for that setup i'm going to try to be farming that throughout this week and hopefully maybe in a week or two i can get that out to you guys but otherwise, this setup works perfect for you guys who are just turning level 60 and are looking for somewhere to go for both PvE and PvP content. Like I said at the start of the video, if you have any sort of questions, anything at all, make sure you guys come on over to Twitch. We stream basically every single day. I'd be happy to answer any questions you guys have over there. But anyways, I hope you all have a fantastic day. I'll catch you in the next video. See ya.